Hello guys! So in today's video we're going to make something extremely exciting which is stylized clouds. And uh, yeah, what you're seeing on your screen is the, and the end result we are aiming at. So we are going to make it step by step. So it's also animated as you can see, but rendering volumes in EV or cycles is nowhere near real time, so it's not perfect until you've actually rendered it. Um, so this is how it's supposed to end up looking. And let's dive in. So we are going to need this cube to make the cloud. It's going to be located inside the cube. And uh, all, we, all we have to do is just scale it a bit. Right? That's the cloud. It's going to be inside the cube. Let's go to shading. Let's instantaneously switch to rendered mode. Because everything is going to happen without the HDRI, right? We don't want any HDRI while we are working. So uh, we are going to use EV. And the first thing we want to do is go to volumetrics and enable volumetric shadows and uh, set the volumetric shadow sample count to 64. Uh, now, next, we want to set this the volumetric samples to 128 and let's decrease the range that our volume is going to be rendered in it's like imagine slicing the uh, slicing the view uh, from our camera to uh, 50 meters away uh, into a bunch of sections and this is how the, the actual volume is being rendered in EV. Let's actually jump in into the shader editor and add a texture coordinate node which is the most important node of all and use the generate coordinates but you know what uh, we want to use the gradient the spherical gradient texture to define where we want our uh, cloud to be located like it's it's going to be a sphere bounded by this box and for this we don't want to use object coordinates because we already scaled the cube it's no longer a cube so we actually want the object coordinates to be non-distorted and in this case they are already distorted so we're going to apply scale so we want to use the generate coordinates but we want to transform them in such a way that they resemble object coordinates let's add negative 0.5 and multiply this entire thing by 2 and that's it now if we compare the two we see that the object coordinates are a bit brighter and that's because we apply the scale so it's no longer uh, from negative 1 to 1, it's now scaled by some volume. But since we transformed our generated coordinates to be from, zero, from negative 1 to 1, we can now use these coordinates to drive the spherical gradient texture. Oh, okay, so much better. So the reason we don't see anything right now was because the volumetric emission shader is bugged. And all we need to fix this is switch it to volume scatter. So let's bring in our light source a bit closer. That will let us see uh, what we are doing a bit better. Let's set it to 5000 and let's set it let's change it to area light and scale it up and bring it a little bit away and let's now just the density so yeah yeah you might be thinking this is a yeah uh, weird looking stylized cloud uh 
but that's, that's not the end result, right? We want to work on this part. We want, uh, this gradient texture actually goes from 0 to 1. So here, all the way outside the sphere, it's 0, and then it gradually goes to 1. So it's not as sharp uh, as you see it here. Uh, the reason why it's sharp is because we, we changed our density, which is a multiplier. It's actually uh, gradually going towards 1. But I'm going to keep it to 5. So, as you may have already guessed, we are going to use the Warner texture. And the way we are going to use it is we are going to say wherever this gradient texture is greater than the distance of the Warnoi and we are going to use object coordinates for the Warnoi and we are going to decrease the scale okay so this is a nice looking cloud right but it doesn't look as good without the proper lighting and the proper volume shader, right? This is just grayscale, boring looking cloud. So first of all, we want to work on the world shader. And here, uh, all we're going to do is just use the generated Z to make a uh, gradient. Um, to use in our color ramp so we are going to separate XYZ and use use Z we are going to add 1 and then we are going to divide by 2 and plug this into the color ramp and this into the color of the background so this is what it gives us a nice way to make a uh, sky texture oh, I'm using a light blue for the bottom and a darker blue for the top like this but let's return to our object shader and let's uh, change this volume scatter to a principled volume but unlike in volume scatter, black in this color of uh, principled volume doesn't mean uh, zero density, it means black dense volume. So instead, we are going to plug this into the density. And we are going to scale this by some number, say 3. So the next important thing to tweak. Is the absorption color and the absorption color is the color of the shadow of our cloud and we want to make it somewhere in between the red and orange and the color of the cloud itself it's going to be a, a little a little bit uh, inclined towards blue so to actually make it more dense uh, we can either increase the density um, or scale the entire scene and scaling the entire thing proved to give a little different result and it's actually better um, than tweaking the density for some reason I'm not sure what why exactly but it just kind of works like that uh, so you want to make the the area light a bit stronger Oops, I said stronger. And smaller. So now I still want to increase the density bit. And at this point, you may already find it pretty useful, and you can already use it in one of your cartoony scenes. But I'd like to push it a bit further 
and I want to make the actual light in a bit better. So currently we have just one light and uh, let's move it in a separate collection and call it sun, sun, sunlight. Um, so the sunlight usually has a bit warmer color. bit warmer color and we want to add another couple lights why because sunlight is isn't the only source of light um, in the sky the other one is the ground which bounces off the sunlight and the other one is more like an ambient light that gets diffused to the atmosphere and uh, it also influences the color of the clouds so, uh, especially in the shadow areas. So, um, right now you would expect uh, the shadows to be more bluish. Because the sky is blue and the sky also lights up the clouds. So that's the thing. You want to add another light source and say um, area light. It's going to be, uh, let's enable everything. So you're going to scale it, it's going to be big and it's going to be blue and it's going to be very 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 powerful um to 20000 say 20000 yep Yep, so as you can see this gives another dimension to the color variation, color vibration in the shadow areas of our cloud. Um, and that's not it because from the ground there's also another light and uh, this is more like a bounce. Um, it has very very tiny influence on a cloud but it's still there we should include it it's somewhere in between cyan and green and uh, and as you can see we made it too bright so let's make it so let's sort all these lights into their own collections so this is going to be the skylight and this one is going to be the ground light and you may not appreciate this entire light and setup until we actually start duplicating the clouds moving them around and uh, until we actually see how nice it looks in the end and uh, But yeah, I'm pretty sure my ground light is a bit too bright. So yeah, without playing around, you never get it right. And it's too tiny, probably. But look at it! Isn't it awesome? Isn't it beautiful? Well, one might think so. So what about the animation? Guess what? The uh, Werner texture, all we have to do is just shift the uh, one of the coordinates a bit. Tell me what can be simpler than this? So yeah, we're going to combine XYZ and here in X we're going to type hashtag frame and divide it by 100. But don't hit the space button because not going to tell you much you have to actually press and hold the arrow keys in order to navigate between frames because that's the only way the um, volume doesn't get blurred so this is the only way to preview it 
But another thing that we want to do uh, before we finish this is we want to use the random value to offset each uh, object of the cloud. So that we, when we duplicate it, it doesn't look exact. And this way, you can even build chains and even rings. Check this out. And the coolest thing about this is that this isn't limited to Warner. You can use this with a noise texture and this way you can create not just stylized but also realistic kinds of clouds and VFX. You can make dragon shaped clouds, you can make animated cloud sculptures using Eevee. So if you like this technique share the video with your friends, subscribe, comment, like and we'll see you in the next video. Ciao!